So we read this article online about the happiest cities in China. Some were really obvious. And some were absolutely shocking. <laughs> and one of the most surprising was Shenyang. This is so cute. Sure, it may be one of the largest cities in northern China. But in all honesty, it's not a place we knew much about before coming. It's like a naked massage uh -huh. and they splatter you with juice. So today, we're going to investigate what makes the people of Shenyang so gosh darn happy. Hello, 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 nyaha. And for this episode, I've decided to ask another detective to help us solve this mystery. Five RMB for a bowl of noodles, I mean. So today, we are joined by a somewhat Dongbei local. Yay, I'm so happy to see you again. I know, me too. If you don't know who this girl is, <laughs> you should do. It's Amy from Blondie in China. Yay. It's been a minute. It really has. It's been like a year since we've seen each other, I but know. it really feels like you never left. It's crazy. Oh. And we are exploring Shenyang today to find out if it is one of the happiest cities in China. Now, Amy, what do you think about this title? Like, this is the first I've heard of it. Like, you're the one that has brought this wow. information to me. But I always feel happy when I come to Shenyang for many different reasons. Like, it's a multifaceted city. There's so much you can do here. I really love coming here. I think we're going to have a great day. Well, I'm already happy because we get to spend it together. Yay, so happiness level's already off the charts. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm here to teach you. I'll start taking it apart. And of course, given that our guest is one of China's top food vloggers, we are going to eat till our stomachs burst. But I ate one crab too many. So let's kick off our happiness quest by searching out a tasty local breakfast. This street's looking tasty. I can see some bread over there calling my name. They have original, they have brown sugar. Brown sugar bread? Sounds like that would make me happy. Hongkong cereal, ma. Oh, I'll take it. How much money? Don't worry, girls, I got this. <laughs> I haven't seen a coin in years. <laughs> What's happening? Even he's confused. Oh. Oh, it's not as sweet as I thought it was going to be. Yeah, it's okay. It's bread with some sugar for me. Yeah. Bread. I know you love your bread. It's very soft. Yeah, I'm a fan. I'm, I'm pretty happy. It's a good start of the day. Tell you what doesn't make me happy though. Fruit on pizza. Mm-mm. Not a fan. He's not happy. <laughs> He's not happy. <laughs> Got a jam big. Now, unfortunately, Amy, Jack doesn't eat eggs, so it's an Eggless jumping. How do you do feel about that? Do that? This is not a, a way of life I want to be participating in. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, cough. She says it's good. But I don't know if he's actually going to make it or just give us a piece of bre uh, bread. Oh. Oh. So never mind about the jumping. We've got a little bit of goat face. Maybe I'll sample some of that instead. Clearly, he is joking. I think, because I'm pretty sure there's only one thing Jack wants to consume first thing in the morning. So there's not many things that make Jack happy, but one thing is a good cup of coffee. And so we are here at the coffee street. Every time I come to Shenyang, I just love walking on this street because there are all these like converted industrial kind of spaces, yeah. which is my favorite vibe, like industrial chic. Uh -huh. And like a lot of just really nice cafes here. So many nice cafes. Choosing one is going to be tough though. This place looks cute. I love the font. I reckon we can find something maybe a little bit cozier. Meh. Nah. Now I reckon this one's a little bit on the fancy side for us. Not quite the vibe we are looking for. I don't know, this one looks all a little bit twee to me. The search continues. Ooh, a fancy vintage shop. Well, let's hope for the good of both the video and for mine and Nico's joint account that she does not notice that. You no, know, I love a good vintage buy. No, hey. let's go get coffee. Come on. <laughs> no, I want a shop. That makes me happy. Fine. Next one we see, we're going in. This is so so cute. Yeah, it's oh. the vibe. It's a very tall chair. Oh, I finally, finally feel human again. And honestly, what a vibe this coffee shop is. Wow, you can tell someone's had a coffee. He's perked up, hasn't he? I didn't realize you had such vibey places up here in Dongbei. Yeah, and the first time I came to Shenyang, maybe like three or four years ago, this street definitely was not as vibey. I feel like the coffee culture is expanding. It's, it's, what's the word I'm looking for? It's booming. thriving, bo booming. It's, it's booming. It's, yeah. You heard it here first, it <laughs> is booming. Right, Jack, happiness scale, one to 10, how you feeling? I am a solid six now. We're rising, we're rising, we're rising. Say, Amy. Oh, solid seven, eight. 
Yeah. Wow. A cup of coffee, some nice sunlight. It's beautiful. I'm feeling this, I'm feeling this. I'm, I'm liking the vibe. Very good coffee, but I feel like I could be happier. I'm probably like a six or seven right now. So let's see what else this neighborhood has to offer and see if we can get me up to a 10 out of 10. So as you guys know, one thing that makes me and Nico very happy is a good old fashioned road trip. And I've just stumbled across this adorable little mini EV here. And it's got my mind thinking, how feasible do you guys think it would be to drive one of these little Wu Lings the length of China? Is that even possible? Are there enough EV charging points? I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts in the comments down below because I reckon that could be a pretty fun little video series. Come on, stay focused, Jack. Hey, quite an Americana. Well, that would keep me very happy if I was living here. I'm honestly shocked at how reasonable a lot of the coffee prices are here. Dongbei as a whole has a much more affordable cost of living. Although, of course, wages are a lot lower. But interestingly, pensions actually aren't that much lower, which surely must contribute to people's happiness, especially as they go into their old age. And where do old people like to hang out? The park, of course. And here in Shenyang, I was delighted to discover that they've done a really good job of converting even these like smallest of spaces into lovely little park areas. Wow. And it's an excellent space for older people to come and exercise during the middle of the day, get them out of their apartment blocks, which is definitely going to increase people's happiness. Some interesting art as well. Another thing that I'm told makes people happy. So I've heard, so I've heard. Now, another thing that I've noticed throughout Dongbei is that people just love fishing here. Whenever you go to a park, there'll always be a bunch of breaders out there catching some tasty fish for their dinner. How about you catch us a little something to eat, Jack? Hello, 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 I am always down for a gorkwe. So a bit of an epic fail on my part. So I just went for the six quai because I thought that was going to be the original. Turns out it was uh, red bean paste. So that is a bit of a bummer. I'm still feeling it. I quite like the like sweet. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. So you guys might be wondering why you've not seen much of Nico and Amy in this vlog. Well, that's because they've been far too busy chatting away. Hence why they walked straight past this gorkwe stand. Didn't even notice that. In fairness though, Amy's been searching out somewhere to get stuck into the most famous local dish. Amy, you brought us to a very local speciality place. Yeah, here in Shenyang. What they're most famous for using here are the chicken carcass, chicken skeletons. Uh -huh. This is arguably the most famous. It's called Lao Si Di. It's been here for a long time. Five RMB for golden noodles. It's like really, really reasonable. Very reasonable, and they're delicious. The carcass is extra. It's seven RMB. You first come over here, get your carcass, and then over there to get your noodles. What's your happiness rating right now, Amy? Well, I'm feeling a bit hungry, so I'd say it's a bit below average. I'm around a six right now. I don't know, six sounds pretty happy to me. I would do anything to be a six on the regular. That was quite stressful. There was like lots of queuing and I'm not a big queue fan. So to get this meal, I would say right now I'm about a five, but it does look delicious. It's actually a bit of a funny way to do it. I got it wrong many times before I got it right. Uh -huh. So I'm here to teach you. Okay, I'm excited. Teach me. Yeah. Dev one, don the gloves. Oh. Nice. So basically you just want to like start taking it apart. The smaller the bits the better because basically we're going to deconstruct this and then nibble on it for a little bit. What happened to the rest of the chicken? Why is it just a carcass? So it actually dates back to kind of the industrialization of this city. The city was quite poor and there wasn't enough money for the workers to eat just the chicken breast. This city has evolved to be eating the chicken skeleton because it's a cheaper part of the chicken. So it really does come from very, very humble beginnings, um, but it's really been embraced as a part of the culture. And please feel free to let me know in the comments below if I've butchered that story, pardon the pun. So I'm not gonna lie, that was quite an odd sensation. Like, yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about it. How do you feel about ripping a chicken carcass? Yeah, having grown up vegetarian, this isn't exactly my jam, fingering a chicken. I'm sorry for what I did to you. Step two, you wanna add a little bit of Stuff. So I really love this chili oil here. It's got a real smokiness to it. It's not super spicy, so you can really afford to put like a big spoonful on it. Yes. And then you also want to put some um, some vinegar. Oopsie. Not the day to wear white pants, that's for <laughs> sure. Okay. Get in there and massage it all together with your pickles, your coriander. And I'm not very good at mixing, it seems. And what results is like a really refreshing chicken salad. Wow. I'm so good. 
You're just getting little bits off the bones. Uh -huh. That's basically all it's about. Mm. Well, it's very vinegary, but that's my fault. That's got a, lo a little bit of a kick. Yeah, it's spicier than I remember it. I mean, it tastes good. The good thing about having the skeleton is like every piece of meat physically touches the bones, so it's all really flavorful and moist. Oh yeah, it's really nice. And now for the noodles. So these noodles are cooked in the broth. The broth that you have here is actually from the carcass of the chicken. I really feel like you can taste the chicken stock in it. It feels like a really hearty kind of chicken soup, but it's noodles, like a chicken noodle soup, basically. So if you're not feeling too great, come here, get this dish. It will make you feel loads better. The drink that you're currently drinking is a beloved Dongbei classic called Dayao. It's not a Coke, it's not a lemonade. It's a bubblegum flavor in my opinion. It's Vimto, oh my God, it's Vimto. It's like a fizzy Vimto. I don't know what that is. Oh, Amy, that yes. was so good. I know, right? What else do people do in Shenyang to be happy? Well, there's one big thing that you haven't experienced yet, so come with me, I'm gonna show you. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Cloud stream. This sounds like some Disneyland happily ever after shit. Relaxing music, shoe theft. Explain yourself, girls. <laughs> shoe theft. Whoa, you just what's have going an interesting on? way of seeing the world, Jack. <laughs> Don't worry, you will get them back. And when you come out, out for after this experience, you will be a different person. You won't even recognize your shoes. Your shoes won't recognize you because all your dead, dead skin's going to be on the floor soon. Dead skin. Uh, maybe it's best not to know so much about what to expect because here in the north, the bathing culture involves a process known as tuozao, where they just like aggressively rub you from head to toe. Does like, that include everybody? Part? I'm talking in between the buttocks. I'm talking in between the toes, in between everywhere. How are you feeling about that? I'm feeling good. I am ready to be rubbed. <laughs> But I'm not gonna lie, that sounds absolutely terrifying. So I think this is the perfect time for a happiness check. Nico, where you at? After that delicious lunch, I'm on about uh, about a seven or eight, yeah? I'm feeling pretty good. I'm riding a solid eight or nine right now. I am currently rocking about a three. It's a hurting. three? Yeah, my back's hurting. I'm still feeling a bit violated by the fact that he just snatched my shoes off me. You're gonna love it. I was scared when I came here. I thought I wasn't gonna like it, but I've now been here like three or four times. Well, at least I'm gonna have you guys to hold my hand as we go through. Wow. Well, we're not holding your hand. No. You're going through that door, we're going through that yeah. door. We're gonna leave you on your own. Yeah, but I'll give you some tips. You're gonna go in there, take off your clothes, and then you're gonna scan <laughs> this so you can get in line for getting your skin rubbed. Did they give me like a robe or like a swimming costume? You no, know, it's naked. Yeah. You're naked. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna love it. You can choose what juice you get splattered with and then they just massage you and like everything is wet and everything, well, that sounds weird, but like just the whole bed is full of smoothie. It's weird. it's strange, but it's amazing. The only words I could concentrate on was splatter, juicy, wet, massage, naked. True. So who's naked, me or them? Like you. Both. Okay. Jack's never had a massage. How have you never had a massage? Well, who knows what's gonna happen in there. Let's go find out. <laughs> See you on the flap side. Well, guys, it's just me and you now. Oh, Dios mio. Was that an experience like nothing I've ever had before? You walk in and the changing rooms are beautiful, aren't they? Yeah. And then you get naked. Absolutely stark bollock naked. Everyone's naked. I don't think I've ever seen so many willies in my life. Honestly, it was absolutely chock a block. And then you sign up for your scrub. The guy tried to talk me through some options. I didn't really understand what was going on. There are lots of different tiers of how much you can pay. I just pointed at one. He said it was 168 quite. I said, okay. Then you can go up a, another level, which we did, which was get the scrub, a 30 minute massage, plus a hair, face and foot mask, oh, um, which was lush. He basically made me lie down on the bench, absolutely start bollard naked, and then he just started going absolutely ham on me, to be honest. But I didn't think it was gonna hurt. Basically had a glove covered in sandpaper or something, and he basically just went and scrubbed my entire body. And I was kind of shocked when she started scrubbing me and it was a bit sandpapery. It was like squirting this like warm milk all over me from a bottle. That was very, very surreal. And then he like flipped me over, he was like going fully into me. He was like pulling my legs in all directions. She scrubbed everywhere. Yeah. Every nook and cranny. Shining nips after this. <laughs> <laughs>
Not gonna lie, he did kind of elbow me in the balls a few times, which wasn't too comfortable. And then we got to the massage. Oh my God, that was amazing. Yeah. It basically felt like I was getting trampled by an elephant. It was Lush. so nice. And then things took a turn for the bizarre. She really got into like, do you know, like the pressure points. It started getting all fingery, and it basically felt like a thousand crabs were having a rave in football boots on my back. My hair feels really good. My face feels good. I think it's going to take me a few days, a few weeks, a few months, and a lot of therapy to process exactly what's happened this afternoon slash evening. Where is he? I can't believe he's taking even longer than us. He's, he's all like, I don't like relaxing. Yeah. I don't like being happy. But takes then, it, <laughs> takes even longer than we do. Here they are. We're very nervous about how your experience went. <laughs> oh, well, what can I say? I'm not sure if it was enjoyable or not. It's going to take a long time to process it. So, but it was definitely an experience. How was it for you guys? It definitely did feel like someone was peeing on you and then um, <laughs> rubbing you with sandpaper at the beginning. Loved the massage though. On the happiness scale, how are you feeling? <laughs> Um, I think I'm somewhere between a one and a nine. I'm feeling probably like a nine. I'm feeling good. Oh, I'm at a dead 11. Like, I <laughs> 11. am, I am wow. lush out. There are certain treatments I don't enjoy in China. I don't like ear cleaning. I've le learned that my holes are really small, my ear holes. Just your ear holes. <laughs> I just love my ear holes. But this, I love. And now knowing that we're about to go and eat all you can eat buffet. We're gonna eat all you can eat buffet. You didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, it's just there, and it's all well, you need seafood this buffet. This changes everything. I mean, you oh, could have yeah. told me that. I'd have just skipped the massage and gone straight to the buffet. Well, then we're good we didn't tell you. You had an experience. I'm very proud of you that you did it. Thank you. Right, let's it's go get a buffet impressive. in. <laughs> We have the seafood buffet, but there's lots of other things too. So you've got some sushi, steamed oyster situation here. It's rad. <gasps> like, but you've also got meats. We've got the barbecue section here. Man, this looks so good. People often think Dongbei is just meat, 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 yeah. but they actually love their dipping vegetables, and they've got all these dipping sauces. Or you can drink beer. We getting drunk. This is like a dumpling and noodle like area. What? All freshly cooked. I already know what I want. I think this is probably the best buffet I've ever seen. Delicious. I'm gonna get a butter prawn. Big bit of grab. I love crayfish. What a boiled frog. Oh my God. Oh my God, look at this. This is how you get your money's worth in a buffet. Go seafood. straight to the seafood. Freshly cut sashimi, not bad. <coughs> oh, I put way too much wasabi. Mm. I mean, I'm in heaven, Jack kind of hate seafood. I'm stuck with the vegetables, but you know what? That's okay. Together, we, we'll have a balanced diet. We'll all live to 100 years of age, I'm sure. Sure. You tell yourself that, rabbit boy. Cold and chewy. We're in Dongbei, so let's see what the, the duck is like. There was a queue for it, so I'm assuming it's going to be good. Yeah. You know, it's not as good as you'd find in Beijing, but it's okay. It's pretty tender, though. Like, I'm actually shocked. It's, like, really tender. Dios mio. <laughs> Whoa. You have really outdone yourself here on the crabs, missus. You must be beaming with happiness after all this seafood. I would say about a crab ago, I was, like, peak happiness, like 11 out of 10. But I ate one crab too many, and now I'm not feeling good. Oh dear, maybe we should take you for a little lie down, eh? Oh, yeah. Ah, now that's <laughs> better, isn't it? So can I have one final happiness rating? Nico? I'm infinite happiness right now. Amy? Well, I was going to say 12, but if you're infinite, <laughs> that makes me look a bit silly. So I'll say infinite plus one. <laughs> And I'm a solid seven, which is about as high as you'll ever find me. So join us next time to see if I can get to an eight when we go exploring some fun things. Catch you in the next one. Bye! Bye. <laughs>